Hello and welcome to V Anatomy, veterinary anatomy and physiology for students studying animal science, veterinary science and veterinary nursing. In today's lesson, we will be looking at the nasal chambers, hard palate and mandible. Please see my previous videos for an overview of these areas and for more details on the cranium. The nasal chambers are located within the nasal cavity, located rostrally on the skull. Let's look at a sagittal section and a transverse section of the nasal cavity. The lateral borders of the nasal cavity are formed by the maxillae, caudally the ethmoid, ventrally the vomer maxilla and palatine, and dorsally the incisive nasal maxilla and frontal bones. The nasal cavity is divided into left and right nasal chambers by a cartilaginous septum. The entrance to the nasal cavity begins at the external nose, which is supported by a cartilaginous frame. The nasal planum or rhinarium is a pigmented pad formed from a thick stratified squamous epithelium. The pattern of this epidermal layer is unique for every dog, much like a human fingerprint. Air enters into the nasal chambers through the external nostrils or nares. Within the nasal chambers are scrolls of bone called turbinates or conchi. The turbinates are covered in ciliated mucous epithelium and have a rich blood supply. Inspired air will travel through the nasal chambers, being warmed and moistened prior to entering the rest of the respiratory tract. Mucus produced by the epithelium will trap foreign particles, such as dust, so that these do not reach the lungs. Cilia, which are small, beating, hair-like projections on the surface of the epithelial cells, move the mucus to the pharynx, where it can be swallowed. If there is inflammation in the nasal chambers, more mucus is produced, and this may be seen as nasal discharge at the external nares. The turbinates or conchi are grouped into dorsal, ventral and ethmoidal. The ventral conchi, which arise from the ventral part of the nasal cavity, end rostrally in the alar fold, which is a small cartilaginous swelling visible through the external nostrils. The dorsal conchi are located dorsally within the nasal cavity. Between these folds are canals, known as meatuses. Within each nasal cavity are a dorsal, middle and ventral meatus, with the common meatus running parallel to the septum. These are small spaces in real life, but they have been enlarged in this diagram to demonstrate them better. The ventral meatus is the only one which travels through to the pharynx, and this is why when placing a nasoesophageal or nasogastric tube, the tube should be angled ventrally. The caudal ethmoidal conchi are rich in sensory nerve endings, responsible for olfaction, the sense of smell. Odor particles dissolve in the mucus and stimulate specific olfactory nerve fibres. These nerves pass through the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone to reach the olfactory bulbs in the brain. The vomer is located ventrally within the nasal cavity, dorsal to the palatine. The vomer nasal, or Jacobson's organ, is an accessory olfactory organ located in this region. This organ can detect chemical signals, including pheromones, which are important for social signalling and responses. Let's now look at a ventral view of the skull to get a better view of the hard palate. The hard palate forms the rostral roof of the oral cavity and separates the oral and nasal cavities at this point. The hard palate is formed by the fusion of the palatine processes of the incisive, maxillae and palatine. It merges with the soft palate caudally. Finally, let's look at the lower jaw or mandible using a lateral view of the skull and a dorsal view of the mandible itself. The mandible is formed by two halves joined together rostrally at the mandibular symphysis. Each half of the mandible is divided into the horizontal body and the vertical ramus. The body contains the sockets or alveoli for the teeth of the lower jaw. The condylar process of the ramus articulates with the rest of the skull, forming the temporomandibular joint. The mandible is a site for attachment of masticatory muscles, involved in chewing. The masseter inserts on the masseteric fossa and the temporalis inserts on the coronoid process. Finally, knowledge of where branches of the trigeminal nerve exit the skull can be used to perform local anaesthetic nerve blocks for dental procedures. The infraorbital foramen in the maxilla and the middle mental foramen are useful sites to palpate for these techniques. You should now have a better understanding of the nasal cavity, hard palate and mandible. Leave a comment if you have any questions and please remember to like and subscribe to see future videos. Thank you for watching.